B2D interview series here we've been doing for the last two months. And we continue it today with another special guest. And I'm excited to have him. We just, I mean, we just talked for like 15 minutes, which has been tons of fun. <laughs> we could have just did a whole show right there. But we did it. Bring all of us in the way Samoa pieces. Did I get the did I get the name right? I mean, I usually don't like hiccup when I say my last name. I but uh I think for the first time for a South Jersey guy, that's not bad at all. All right, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> Guys, South every Jersey show. represent, North Jersey represent, Rutgers represent, Kevin Yo. Malice. What's up? <laughs> Thanks for having Yo. me on, guys. I'm really, really, really honored and uh um appreciative uh of this opportunity to speak with you guys today. And thanks for having me for real. Yeah, we, we appreciate you jumping on with us. Every uh, show we're brought to you by our doc. Got to make him yours. That's Dr. Paul Vidal, Specialized Physical Therapy, LLC. Burlington, Cherry Hill, Princeton locations. Find him on the web, specializedphysicaltherapy.com. Got Tom Arnone, Steve Reichel, Jimmy Smith joining us. And peace as well. Feel free to ask questions, chime in family. We'll show it up on the screen for you and read off as many questions as we can get to as well. And we got questions for him as well. But our poll question that we'll dive into first, brought to you by Ambuck Services. Telling the boys from A2D saying it 20% off. Gutter, gutter guards, gutter installation, deck restoration, everything outside your house. We've had tornadoes come through, it feels like, over the last 24 hours. So you need anything fixed, tell Michael Ambrose. The boys from A2D saying it 20% off. Ambuck Services, A-M-B-U-C-K services.com. Our poll question. Do you think the NFL will start on time? Do you agree or disagree? Let us know. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch. That's where we're live. And everywhere you get your podcast, you can find us as well. Like, follow, subscribe. Let's get right into it. Pisa, do you think the NFL starts on time? Oh, hey, that's the poll question. Uh, yes. I'm going to throw it out there. Yes. I think it starts on time. I'm hoping – with everybody protesting, the COVIDs don't go up and COVID cases don't go up. And we, you know, it shows, hey, we're probably all right to be around in crowds. And it starts on time because I wanted to. Yeah, me but too. I don't know if that's going to happen. But, yeah, I'm hopeful. Please. I'm right with you. I agree to the poll. I think it starts on time. You can see uh, teams are starting to get back in their facilities. Uh, the coaches are allowed back in their facilities, so they're they're getting there. Uh, I always thought maybe like maybe it'd be like a two week uh, pushback, but you know the NFL, the NFL has been through this whole time has been on schedule. You know they adapted, they've been on schedule, so it, it looks like to me, you know, the biggest business out of them all will will start on time. And if the NBA comes back, like it looks like July thirty first, they're the ones who sort of stepped out the door first and shut everything down. I feel like they sort of led the way on this. So them coming back July 31st, um, I agree with the poll. I think NFL follows suit and is on time. Boyd? I think so, too. Um, you know, the way you see things are opening up, you know, they're having businesses. And, you know, like Pisa just alluded to, uh, you're seeing the protests and things going on. You know, there are large crowds. So, unfortunately, this is a type of test as well. We're going to see if the numbers go up or down. Um, we're hopeful that, uh, you know, Hopefully these, this thing is contained and we're figuring things out. But I, I think the way things are pointed, uh, we're going to see football start on time. I don't know if the fans necessarily, if we're going to have full capacity yet, right. which we definitely could. But um, I think football will be fine. I think we'll have it this year, guys. Nice. Yeah, I'm thinking we're going to be on time. But I'm with you, Jimmy. The only real question should be if there's fans in the stands or not. I'm going to be on my phone. I'll watch it on the computer. I'll still watch it. You join in here. I, well, yeah. Hey, why not? Right. I'm thinking this new wave, this whole style, the virtual world we're in. Honestly, I, me, this is my opinion, obviously. So me personally, as a player, do I want fans in the stadium? Absolutely. But then again, I think about like when I used to play in my front yard and Maybe my mom would be watching or somebody would be watching. But at the end of the day, I just played because I loved it. And I think, um, you know, the passion for the game will show. And obviously, you know, people are going to have their phone. So they will be watching. It's Sunday. What are you going to watch on Sunday? It's Sunday fall. Like, you watch football. And so obviously it's not going to be cool that you're not there at the game. But for me, who uses Sunday ticket already, I don't. I mean, for me, it's not going to bother me that much. So, um 
you know, I just hope the cases don't go up so that we are looking at an on time start and, you know, just keep it rolling. But that's just hopefully uh, that's just wishful thinking. And maybe I don't know. What do you guys? No, I mean, I like to talk things into existence if I can. Okay. And, and try to be positive you. and try to believe that everything's going to go off without a hitch. And then I also am not a beggar, a beggar can't be a chooser either. So, you know, I, we all want sports back. So right. I'll take what I can get. I mean, I usually watch sports on TV anyway. How often do I go to events? Maybe four or five right. times a year I'll, I'll circle around, but right. I'm not going to every event like some people. So right. to me, just give it to me on TV. And, and when the time fans can come back in the stadium, then you allow it. So, you know, I think starting with no fans is completely fine. Just get the ball rolling because mm -hmm. you can always adapt and adjust right. as you go on. So, right. Lisa, I want to get into some questions about you and, and okay. talk a little bit about you. And I know uh, the people out there joining us do as well. So, you know, the first question I had for you, you know, a huge high school senior year. And you obviously were San Diego County, uh, become the only player in San Diego County history to be selected first team on offense and defense. So the question is, what did you like better, offense or defense? And how special of a year was that for you? Wow. Um, so, yeah, I, that's that's that stat you put out there about being the only person to go player of the year on both sides of the ball. It was actually first team on both sides of the ball um, for our for all of San Diego. And it was I was the first one in history. So we're talking Junior Seau, Marcus Allen, Ricky Williams, um, some great running backs. Donnie Edwards, some great linebackers. Obviously, I said Seau. Um, to be able to represent on both sides of the ball in one year, I mean, it's never happened before. And it was – that was so cool. That was so cool to have that uh, distinguishment. And um, honestly, it kind of said what I liked most, which was I, I wanted to just be on the field. I didn't care if I was on offense or defense, I was still on the same team. And so for me to be able to, all right, have an influence on whether we scored points, having an influence on whether we didn't allow points, man, that's, I wanted to be in the mix. I didn't want to sit on the sidelines. I, I didn't want to, I mean, if I had to do special teams, I did it. I mean, it wasn't like, <laughs> I, I would want to break, but then again, if coach needed me to cover a kickoff because we didn't want, you know, the returner to return it back. All right, coach, whatever you need. And, you know, just just being on the field. I didn't want to leave the field. And uh, they usually they had to usually carry me off like I was cramping. And so that's what happened. Eventually, I'd end up cramping. You know, they'd rub it out on the sideline and I'd run back in. So where honestly, but I got to say, I enjoyed scoring touchdowns. There's, <laughs> there's so part of me wants to say offense because I love scoring touchdowns and the like, oh man, I'm the guy. So part of my ego loved offense. Um, but then a part of me just loved the grittiness of doing a job that nobody likes doing. Honestly, I didn't like uh, tackling people. Tackling was like, oh man, it hurts. Oh, it sucks. I don't want to do it. But you did it because you had to. Um, after high school, they said, you're only gonna play linebacker. So I kind of had to embrace the role. And so then I learned to appreciate it and love it and was like, okay, well, he says, I'm gonna be a linebacker. I gotta be a linebacker. Even though my ego was saying, man, but you can run the ball, man. You were, you were all league, you were first team. You were all state running back. Like Ricky Williams didn't even have the same distinguishment you have a like, year. And so, those battles were there, but at the end of the day, I trusted the coaches and I think linebacker worked out. <laughs> um, it's a long way to answer the question of what did I love most? I just love being on the field, man. Honestly, no, that's, it's a great that's answer. Be. Um, but offense obviously was uh, something that wasn't in the cards. And like I said, I think it worked out and I appreciate coach Jones and I think that was the time where I had to learn it's not about you, it's about the team. And so the team needs you at here. And so play your play your role. And uh and I think it worked out. Yeah, it worked out for you. <laughs> it worked out for you. But it just it just it just goes to show you. I mean, look at the names, you know, that you, that you just brought up. I mean, Ricky right. Williams actually has a tie to Philadelphia in terms of baseball. So Ricky Ricky Williams was a, a Phillies prospect. Oh, that's he, right. He, he did play baseball. Texas. Uh, one of my family friends was, was part of the scouting department. So we used to go to 
the Phillies practice facility in Clearwater and I actually met Ricky Williams when I was little. And she was like, this guy's going to be a great football player. Well, that next year, he, he, he's going off at the University of Texas. I'm like, he's not going to play for the Phillies. So we, <laughs> we, we, we cancel that out. But just to be – like you said, junior sale. What, what is – you know, this is a question that I knew I was going to ask you. Yeah. Just what, what does he meant to you and, and, and still mean to you uh, to this day? Well, I, Junior Seau, um, first of all, he, we're, we're, I know we're family because all Samoans, we're all related. You know, <laughs> it's like we're all, I feel like we're all related and when we are. And, and whenever I'm joking about that, but I feel like we all act like that. Like, hey, that's my cousin. And so for me, that was uncle. That, oh, that's my uncle. So when people would say, oh, yeah, that's my uncle, it was like, no, for real, that's my uncle. Now, obviously, he wasn't my, well, he wasn't my real uncle, but he grew up a couple, we grew up in the same neighborhood. Um, we went to the same church. His uncle or my uncles were his age. So we we're all, I mean, we're pretty much family. And so I, I knew him from that perspective and I seen his journey from, well, I didn't actually see it because I was really younger, but I knew who he was. It was present and evident who he was in the community and in my life. And so I just wanted to be able to emulate him. I told you guys backstage that once you see greatness, at least for me, when I saw greatness, I always wanted to emulate that. I always wanted to be like that. I gravitated towards that. And it just happened to be right down the street from me. You know, and so that inspiration, that motivation that he made it out of this place was the fuel that helped me burn all the way throughout my career. Um, and even now to this day, rest in peace, guys, you know, his soul, because I mean, the dude gave it like I, it's hard to judge. I just judge people by how they treat me, how they act. And and he never was anything but gracious towards me, even when I was coming up and tried to help. And he did camps and he did other stuff in my life that a lot of people don't know about. But um, just from a personal standpoint, he was just iconic, you know, even bigger than the game. So then actually seeing him play and dominate on Sundays and Monday, I thought I got to do it. That's the standard. And obviously I didn't hit his standard, but even trying to go for that or try to work towards attaining that, I think I did all right as well, you know, and, and you realize why, Hey, he's a hall of famer and you know, I'm a good player who had great moments. He's a great, I'm a good player who had great moments. And so, um, but it's all, my football career was really um, molded by Junior Seau. Wow. So if you like my game, you like Junior Seau because you love the passion that he shared. And that's what he shared with me. And I wanted to share with others is like, man, I care about you. I care about my teammates. I care about the coaches and the fans. I care. I'm here. My elbow's broken and I probably shouldn't be out here, but damn it, like, even a 50% me is better than, you know, <laughs> whatever else. I just got to give it. I got more left. Let me make sure I give it. And so I get fired up even talking about it because that's real in my life. So thanks for asking about that. Junior was an icon and, um, you know, God rest his soul. Yeah. And everybody you talk to, when you hear the same things about a guy, you know, it's true, right? Yeah. So like when anybody you bring up Junior say out and you get the same responses, you know, and, and, and how genuine of a guy he was. And how much he meant for a lot of people. I mean, we're East Coast guys, you know, and, and I remember Junior say, I mean, you said iconic. Mm -hmm. That's the word. Yeah. Iconic was the word. I mean, the emotion, you know, I'm an emotional guy right. talking sports or being around sports. So, you know, just that emotion, I think, rubbed off on so many young kids. And you're right, what he did for, for, for the community, what he did for, for, for all young guys, you can't say enough about him. Well, yeah. you you guys are talking. If you know, everyone knows who Junior Seau is, and and uh, and there's a good reason you know why he who he is. I mean, how he plays the game. That's how he attacked life. You know, <laughs> and like, how can you not want to be like? I, I don't know. For me, maybe that was our energy. I mean, I don't know, but that's how I felt. Like, you know what? That's if I'm if I'm gonna make it to the NFL, I want to be like him. Because you got to have a character you like, right? Like growing yeah. up, there's wrestlers I like. Oh, I want to be like him. I don't want to be like that wrestler, you know, Hulk Hogan. I like you, Hulk, but I like Ultimate Warrior more. So, um, right? Well, but at the end of the day, Hulk's like he's like the great though. So, like, I like all right. So I go back and forth. It's just 
that's I wanted I wanted my style to emulate certain people, you know, and so that's why the debate about sports is great because, you know, we can agree to disagree. Some people say, Michael, you know, for me, I'm a West Coaster. I like Kobe. So, you know, um, the great thing is, you know, you can always go top five. And so the fact that they've acknowledged Junior Seau as a top five linebacker in the history of the game, I'm like, thank you, God. Like that, that's us because I feel like, OK, well, I made it. So. San Diego, Oceanside, we're on, and people will know because Junior Seau. So, hey, I uh, I went cross country last year for the first time. Actually, was able to like pull that trip off that I think so many people want to do, and uh, take an RV out there. And we went to San Diego, and first time on the West Coast. Period. Man, I got to move there. That's all. <laughs> I got I to I get out of Jersey. I got to get take there. me with probably, you. Probably, the, probably the nicest place. In America, in my opinion, that you didn't feel like, uh, thank you, you. like you just felt like you were on a, a tropical island in a way. Just the, the perfect weather, just everything. I can't clean. I, probably my favorite city. Probably my, my favorite city. Well, I didn't. I mean, my grandfather, he was military and he got stationed out in Long Beach. We ended up migrating. There was a Samoan community in Oceanside that was it's right next to a, um, a marine base. And so a lot of Samoans, that's, that was their ticket off of the island was joining the military and a lot of them got stationed, you know, at the local Marine base, Camp Pendleton. And so we have a huge, Oceanside's known for the football because we have families from all over the world. They're at the bases and then they move off base or they live on base and they send their kids to the school, all different. And man, we got some talent. So, uh, but Junior was the first one to kind of pop it off for us and get our name out there that, you know, it's, it's San Diego, yes, but Oceanside, you know, is the part of San Diego we're from and and represent. So, but it didn't matter at the end of the day, like you said, weather, San Diego, we got we got a great reputation. And so um, we want to let people know, although the weather's good, we can play some tough ball like we're from San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> uh, boys, I know you guys had a uh, question or two. Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to say, um, you know, earlier you said that you were just good. I don't think you should uh, sell yourself short on that one, man, because oh, you, you. You know, you were striving for greatness and, you know, you did your best. And Tom had mentioned uh, some things, you know, some accolades you had. I mean, it, just in San Diego. But when you came into the league before your injuries, you know, you led your team in tackling for three years. And it's crazy because if you guys were listening, he said, you know, he did not like tackling. when he started <laughs> no, playing football, But he understood that that was part of the game that he needed to do. So he got great at it. And then that was the thing that pushed him all the way up into the NFL. So that's greatness personified to me. So uh, it's great to see stories like that, man. And I just thought that uh, you're selling yourself short. So I just want to throw that out there. And uh, appreciate you, that, you, mean, you know, but I think that's so you say selling myself short. But I think for me, I'm like, man, I play with Marshall Falk. No, I love that. <laughs> I play I love with, that. you know, Aeneas Williams, Orlando Pace. And so I think when the bar's always up there, yeah. And, you know, you're always like, OK, comparing yourself because there's levels to this game. That's not like I'm not dumb. So but that doesn't mean I wasn't trying to be like Marshall Falk or Tory Holt or Isaac Bruce or Kurt Warner. I just understood, hey, there's some factors and variables that you know would help along the way. But in the meantime, just be the best you, you know, you see things, pick whatever you can and and hopefully you will become them. You know, but then again, you realize it can't be for everybody. If everyone could be great, then it wouldn't be great. Right. And so that's why I just want to make sure that when we distinguish it, I'm, I'm giving due props like. But thanks, Jimmy. I Hello. appreciate that. I'll receive that. I mean, <laughs> I'm going to say, I, hey, I'll like your comment. I'll go ahead and like that, <laughs> that, right, that, that comment because, you know, I think. I think it's good to, to receive it. And, and uh, you know, I was like the ugly duckling growing up. And so, uh, da, da, you know, I, that's my own issues. But thanks, Jimmy. I appreciate that. Well, but before I, you came on, you're saying you're a tackle machine. I mean, you were, before you came on, we were, you know, that's all you did for a guy who, who like Jimmy said, and you said, like, that didn't like tackling early on. Right. That's all you ended up doing. So, well, I mean, it's crazy because I'm, I'm, at the combine, I measured out at six foot and I was standing really straight. I mean, core was tight, everything. I was like, back. shoulders retracted. I was, I was so, um, but I'm not big. And so for me, I just thought, okay, if they think I'm small, I have to show them that I'm not small. And so, all right, what do they want me to do? Tackle. 
I mean, I'm on defense. So what the heck is, I mean, your job, I think is pretty clear. Stop them from going <laughs> to that, crossing that line over there, you know? So, um, you know, I just try to tackle, man. I think that shows like your heart too. I think that shows, um, where your heart's at. If you don't want to tackle and I, and I wanted to like, like I was small. So I, I had to show like, all right, if I don't tackle this guy, I'm not doing my job. If I'm not doing my job, I'm going to get fired. Plus, I just look bad. You know, you don't want to be that guy. Don't be that guy yeah. who goes in the locker room and, you know, is scared to tackle in the NFL locker room because you are you actually might not even make it to the meeting. They'll cut you now. So it was something I tried to embrace, you know, and show people that, hey, like, I just keep on working. Just keep on plugging away. And I don't I, – it doesn't get as much props because it's like, oh, that's your job. It's a tackle. But – Honestly, I have I was prideful when the coaches would show the film and say, like, look at this guy. He's always around the ball. Why is that? And they'd have the pointer and he'd be pointing like, look at Pisa. He was on this side of the field and look at him over there. You know, and this is with injuries. Like, I think it was when coach said, hey, everyone to the ball. I was like, everyone to the ball. And then when you get there, like get there with an attitude and ready to freaking crush him. So I don't know. Maybe that's an old school in me. But. Well, that's great. I think you I think you replicate today's linebacker big time. You know, uh, a guy able to go sideline to sideline. Uh, you know, I think that's where your linebacker position has really gone. You know, where I the, I don't want to say the middle linebacker's gone, but the 260 pound, 250 pound middle linebacker is sort of not going away, but it but more more NFL teams are looking for speed at the linebacker position. Guys who can cover and guys who can get to the football right. in a hurry. And I think you really you, you were you were early in that. Um, is the credit I'm going to give? I'm the credit I'm giving to you. You were yeah, early. Yeah, no, thank you. You know when you your your body type and the way you played right. totally fits like you know linebackers today. I mean, I can name off a bunch where it, it looks real similar. Right. And so, you know, I know the Cowboys in the '90s sort of tried to get them fast linebackers go side on the side. Remember Dat and Win? Yeah, Dat and Win. Yeah, right. Yep. Um. Uh, um I mean, London Fletcher, oh, yeah. um, Zach Thomas, uh, Derek, Derek Brooks was considered undersized. Oh, um, she's there's, there was guys that I looked up to that were smaller and motivated me like, okay, well, if they're doing it, then shoot, I could do it as well. I mean, I, I picked my game from so many people. I just love the sport. You know? And if I saw something that they were doing that I liked, I, I was like, man, I want to try that. Peanut Tillman, peanut punch. Oh, towards the end of my career, how do I adjust and get better? And that's the thing is if you don't adapt your game and get better and and add more value to yourself, why why if you're a team, why would you keep somebody on if they're costing a lot of money and they only play one position? So you asked what position I like most. That was a good thing about loving football because you were asked to play special teams. And sometimes you would have to be a blocker on kickoff return where you have to turn around and, you know, block a guy who's running full speed. So and then that's not easy. But. I love my job and I did my job to the best of my ability. I can't, I think what I love at least about my reputation is that nobody can challenge whether I played hard or not. Nobody can challenge whether I left it on the field or not. And so did I miss tackles? Absolutely. Did I, I mean, did I mess up big plays? Absolutely. Um, but then again, I like, I, I ate it. I accepted it and I, trying to get better. And uh, sometimes I did, but a lot of times I didn't. And that's why I think, well, that separated me from great. <laughs> so I was good. So I, that's where I had those great moments, but I was a good player. And uh, Mike, uh, I think it's McCarthy over at Dallas. Yep. He's the one who who said that. And I thought, you know what? I, I resonate with that. I'm a, I'm a good player that had great moments. So, but yeah. thank you guys for recognizing. I mean, I play for us little guys. You know, who can't be out there. I mean, I represent so many more, so, so much more than myself. Because if it was up to myself, I wouldn't want to do that. I wouldn't want to chase people around. Like I told you guys, I'm not, I didn't like tackling. I like running and scoring touchdowns. I don't want to have to chase the guy who has to score touchdowns. So, especially when it's Marshall Falk or, you know, Priest Home. I mean, there's some good running backs. So, uh, you know, but at the end of the day, it that was my job and i just try to do it to my best of my ability and i think that worked out oh absolutely i mean listen we talk about it all the time guys get on guys in this city uh you know blown coverage blown this and it's like man it's not madden like guys right. can beat in this league like the, deon sanders got beat like yeah. I, you know, one of the best corners of all time he's gotten beat 
right. guys get beat, you know, you, you know, uh, uh, Aeneas Williams, a great corner, got beat, killed us when he picked off Diamond McNabb to, for you guys to end up going to the Super Bowl oh, yeah. that one year. But besides that, I mean, it got beat. So, I mean, everybody gets beat. Even the great ones get beat at times. So it's like, you know, but as long as you can, like, I think when you talk about the NFL and any pro, pro player, when their career's over, if you can say, like, what you just said, hey, I left it all out there every play. Right. I gave it my all, and I have no regrets on how I played the game of football. I think that if so many guys can go to sleep like that at night, it, al it allows them to feel great about what they accomplished. You know what I mean? And I think it's so important to, to be able to tell yourselves, like, hey, I did everything I wanted to do. I, I played the game at 110%. I, I, you know, I, I practiced hard. Everything I did, I gave it all, and I have no regrets. And I think that's Amen. the most important thing in anything in life. Amen. That's the lesson, right? And that's the yeah, and that's and that's 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 what I loved about it was like, man, if you turn on my film, that's my autograph. All right, yeah, was it perfect? No, but it's all there, you know. <laughs> I left it all out there, and I think, man, Philly's a tough place to play. I remember that year we opened up out there, and I think McNabb and then they must have scored on the first four drives, and it was the opening, you know, it was opening the season. I think it was two thousand six. And it was hot and the crowd was going wild and you guys are clowning us. I mean, Westbrook was rolling at you guys. Your team was good, man. And I just thought, man, this is a whole nother level of ball out here. Uh, that woke up a guy from St. Louis. It was like, hey, man, shoot. I would love to play here. You fans love that stuff, man. I miss a linebacker, Pisa. We need a linebacker, so. Well, now you, you wouldn't love me if I had to do it now, but <laughs> I, you know, I mean, hey, I'll lay it out there. Like I'll, I'll put it out there. You know, hey, I don't know how long it lasts, but hey, I'm, I'm, I'm down. Hey, but yeah, yeah I mean, I love, I love that experience. I mean, that the the culture that Philly has for sports, all sports, not just football, all sports. It's just amazing. So, I mean, even another honor to be on your guys' show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, just a, a St. Louis Ram guy, bro, from San Diego. <laughs> we appreciate it. Hey, hey, I always said, like, we, we're going to start with Philly sports, but our, but our goal is to be, uh, you know, cover everything around Thanks. the country. You know, that's our goal. We, you know, we start with our roots, but, you know, we, we want, we're want we all fans of, of sports, period. So, I love we're, it. you know, we're fans of the game. You know, I think, I think a lot of Philly guys don't get credit for that because we're so – Die hard in the our teams, but okay. die hard with sports. Right. I'll, I'll argue about LeBron. I'll argue, I'll argue about anything, you know? Right. That's what's great about sports. So, um, Steve, I know you got a question. Yeah, I want to get one before we get uh, Chris on here. But, uh, you know, you know, you, you were just talking about, about uh, Junior and stuff like that, and I just yeah. seen another question kind of relating to something I was going to ask Chris about. Uh, you know, uh, obviously, CTE play, plays a part into – all all athletes who who kind of play these these high high level co uh, contact sports do you feel that we're really getting um getting enough attention to it and enough is being done in both of these sports both both of where we're talking about boxing or combat sports or the nfl because obviously we've seen cases where 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 players have taken their lives because the it wasn't being done right. almost kind of like how what we're hearing right now People have been screaming from the top of their lungs about, about this, and, and nothing's being really done about it. And I, as far as what can be done to give these these athletes a better quality of life moving forward. Yeah, thanks for asking that question. Um, I appreciate that, Stephen. That's that's a good question. Um, and then you know you see that I kind of went like political with my uh, intro to my answer. <laughs> uh, but no, I'm not going to go political. Honestly, the game is, and this is me because I'm a coach and I coach high school ball. Um, and the clinics that I go to, the way we're teaching the game now and the language that we are using towards the game now has changed in a good way for the good. I double said that. But like taking the head out and using our shoulder tackle, it just, and it makes more sense. You know, I think about some of the times like some coaches used to just tell me and it like you really felt like it, like run through a wall. And I'm like, all right, coach, all right coach, ah, and then just run at the wall. Uh, back then, they used to like I remember hearing like parents when they would talk about me because I was really active. They'd be like, oh, he, he's hyper, huh? 
And I didn't realize they were talking like hyperactivity, which I think they're calling ADD now or ADHD. Um, but for me, it was like, it was natural. I, I, although I didn't like tackling, I liked physicality. Um, so honestly, for me, I feel like as a man, like I, I just, I don't know, like it's a nice outlet. So I need it. Um, but I don't need the whole run through the wall, like put your head down and just go as fast as you can. Like, I, I, so I'm glad it's changed and I think it's changed for the good. And I know like for me, my part is making sure that when, the, when I'm saying, hey, this is the way you tackle, they appreciate that it's from someone who's actually been at the highest level. And yeah. so they can say like, okay, well, if he says this is the way to tackle, then I'm going to listen. And so um, being able to play a part in that's super uh, vital. But so seeing it, I think the game's changing for the good. Um, and I, like, honestly, I, I think we just got to be careful with some of the ways that we go about trying to introduce it because sometimes it's, I don't want to take away the, the uh, tenacity or some of the physicality in the sport because to be quite honest, a lot of the game is about intimidation. I mean, if you think about, uh, yeah, it's just, I mean, if you're scared to do uh, your job because you know somebody's going to hit you super hard, uh, that plays in a factor. And I, I don't think we should discourage that. I think that's kind of the point. <laughs> so um, um, now how we hit people and stuff, I, I, I feel like, okay, there's, there could be a right way to hit it. And I think the NFL is addressing it. I think with some of the technology we have these days, they're addressing it with the equipment. Um, I mean, these kids are wearing way better equipment than we, you know, than we wore. They're filled in, their fields are way better uh, than what we had. And that's a good thing, though. I remember coming in the league, and when we played at Philadelphia that year in 2006, some of the older guys talking about what the old veterans mistake, uh, stadium looked like and thinking, like, man, I'm glad we don't have to play at that stadium. <laughs> Hearing how about, about those conditions, right? Yep. So, um, I like, from where it's gone and, you know, how fast it's happened, I feel like the, the game – is in a better place than what it was. And I'm happy that I helped play a part. Like, I don't want people dying from CTE, but at the end of the day, we're all gonna die. Um, I wouldn't trade my life um, for anything. Now, or for, for how I lived, I also believe that CTE, mental health, is just an issue for everybody. So, um, you know, it's, I'm not saying CTE doesn't, I don't know if it does or doesn't. Uh, for me, I'm still kind of young and, um, I try to do things to, to combat it because I know it's there, but I don't want to not acknowledge it by, you know, pretending that, no, it's not real. It's not. No, I mean, it might. I'm not saying people are lying. I just know for me, OK, well, if it is, what can I do to make sure that, you know, I stay on my game and, you know, just try to do the best that I can with what I have. So um, because actually I can't reverse it anyway. So, <laughs> so what do you uh, but, I mean? So, yeah, I, I mean, it's tough because seeing Junior and what he was going through, mm -hmm. um, it always sucks. You hate seeing that kind of stuff happen. But then again, I'm like, well, I got to show that people can still be successful um, even after they're done playing and uh, stay active. And so that's kind of the, the space I'm in right about now. The the NFL. Yeah, the NFL is doing a better job of – you know, taking taking the painkillers out of the game, um, in my opinion, better than, than where they were, just in terms of the body after after professional sports. Gotcha. I think they're, they're segueing into – I don't want to get into that, this whole game, but they're segueing better into to more like a, a marijuana use. Than no, so don't even – I mean, before when you started saying that, I thought – man, I wish they would allow more, you know, CBD usage and, you know, of that – because my body would feel great, like, but but um, it was weird because I felt like when they're shooting us up with the other stuff, it was like, I don't know, man. It just didn't. It, it was yeah. It was it was scary. But you did it because okay, everyone else is doing it, and that's the way yeah. we've been doing it, and so it works for them. But man, I just I mean that would leave me in some serious. I I didn't I didn't feel good afterwards, but I didn't have any alternative. Cause I didn't want to get popped. Cause how does that look if you get popped, you know? So 
it, that's a whole nother debate. But mm -hmm. I, I think you're right with that, like where they're allowing and saying, OK, we're not going to. OK, they're opening up. They're opening up, which we need. Yep. You know, some some different thoughts. And I and I appreciate that because and a guy like you probably had more injuries because of going back in that direction. Right. So it's possibly. It's, yeah. Once they start, that's not going to that's just going to help in, in the time. But it's going to make you feel better with a certain injury that's now going to linger, linger, linger. Right. It was never really essentially treated. But I, I want to get I want everybody to know everything you're doing that you've done off the field. Right. Right, what you're doing for your community right now. Right. And just how much you're giving back. I, I think it's so important for people to hear and, you know, the great things you're doing. Yeah. So if you don't mind telling us all that. Yeah. So growing up, I mean, I was single. I was raised by a single mother. Um, I live with my grandma, my aunties and uncles. And so everybody was working. And, you know, during the summertime, I would go to the Boys and Girls Club. <laughs> I'd have to find a ride to get to where I had to walk to the Boys and Girls Club. And um, so that's basically my life, like my childhood. And at the Boys and Girls Club, that's where I was able to see all different kinds of races, all different kinds of groups at like classes and um, I mean, certain classes, but it was like a, a, a time for me where I learned a lot. I was involved. They fed me when I was hungry. They're just an organization that I believe and they're still around to this day. And so anyways, when I was getting in trouble in high school, um, one of my mentors was still working with the Boys and Girls Club of Oceanside. And, you know, he took me in, spoke at my court, um, you know, got me involved with like making sure I got my head on straight, um, get my books right, my tutoring and all that stuff. So Boys and Girls Club have have been like one of those things that are one of the programs that I thought, all right, if I ever get an opportunity to do something, I, I know it works because I've been through it. I've gone through it and I mean, I, I align with what, they, what they're what they doing. So for me, um, doing work, like now we're doing virtual like uh, meetings with them, but I've done that, you know, and I continue to work with them because I believe in them. In my neighborhood, it's all, you know, so um, when I'm not coaching high school ball, <laughs> I like to do work with them just because it's something I know, you know, sometimes people start their own and I didn't, I'm not that smart, man. I just, <laughs> I tackle people, I play football. And so I was smart, smart enough to know, like, they're good people. They're already going. I want to align with them. And so that's kind of where I've been. And, and looking now, and this, you know, the times we're at, oh, I'm like, man, these kids need it more than ever with no school being involved. Summertime, they're getting hungry, you know. I don't know. Parents aren't working. Boys and Girls Club. If any of you guys know about a Boys and Girls Club, you know that hey, they've been doing it for a long time. And uh, kind of we're, we're just a little, you know, uh, you know, we are our, our guests of the uh, Mr. Chris Levy is on the line with us. Chris, what's up, Chris? What's up, guys? How you doing? Can you hear me this time? Oh, we're good. We're, you know, we're a little late with everything tonight. So we were we were just talking about some of the some of the things you can have a fighter and obviously uh, you know referee and, and stuff like that. What are you working on what's gonna happen with uh, with with some of the the, the um we have both combat sports and football? Yeah, man, I think he hit the nail on the head, really. That was great what you said. Uh, you know, it, it's tough, you know, because I, I recently had, uh, you know, cognitive scan, had my brain done, and uh, shit, the doctor says I'm okay, you know, and I know I probably took more shots than most guys out there. Um, you know, that that being said, I, I've, you know, it's tough because, you know, I wouldn't trade what I do for anything, you know. I think that it, it's unfortunate, but it's a fact that hey, there's a uh, there's a dirty side to all sports, you know. Like what, whatever you do, I mean, whether you're on the field or, you, or you're in the ring, you know. It, you know, in my case, in front of twenty, twenty-five thousand people fighting, 
you know, I get to be that gladiator and in that spotlight. And that's what I dedicated my life to. You know, I've kind of committed to taking some risk, you know, and, 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 and that's, that's part of the game, you know, is it, it, taking those risks. That being said, you know, that, you know, we want to minimize them as much as we can and still keep the, uh, the purity of the sport, if that makes sense. Totally. Yeah. Of that. I mean, you got you have to be careful with it. You know, like you said, it's something I think that both sports are doing, and there are dirty sides for hidden and things like that. But it's one of these things where you have to be happy where it is moving forward. I'm sorry, you're breaking up on me a little bit. Can can somebody repeat that? I hear the other guys loud and clear. Yeah, Steve, uh, inbox me that question because I couldn't I couldn't hear you either. So. Inbox me that question. <laughs> Is it Steve's mic? Because I'm here in the middle. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm getting the same mic. Okay. Yeah. Right. Chris Steven feels like in my ear. <laughs> Steve, go, yeah. try it again. Try it again, Steve. Am I, am I good now? Yeah. I hear you now. I hear you now. All right. No, just like like where we are now, like I think we're forward. I think more more apt, I think, to to kind of put a light on it, so we can kind of get it in a place where you guys have better quality of life after your career. Yeah, I think the I think the question really is for both of you guys is is what have you you know a piece that we talked to you a little bit about you were you were getting into that. Uh, before Chris came on, but what are you guys, you know, doing? Just what we want to know what we're doing for the community after sports activity. What's going with that, and for your sport itself? What 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 am I what am I doing to the community for the community through my sport? Is that that, that kind of the question? Steve, was that it? Yeah, just like, like, like what what are you getting into now as far as far as like like in your community as far as building building the county, economic community, your I mean I I'm I'm coaching I'm, I'm coaching as well. That's that's pretty much my, my full time job, you know. Um and I, I think it's pretty I think everybody kinda knows, you know, that I'm real big in recovery, uh due to all the damage I took, you know, and and all the painkillers to get through the sport, you know, I, I got myself in a lot of trouble on the, um, mixed up in those for a long time. Um, you know, next, uh, next week I will have two years of complete sobriety and, and seven years of, of no, uh, pain medication whatsoever. Congrats, um, man. So, so I, thank you. You know, so as far as the martial arts community goes, you know, I, I'm not the only one that had that issue. You know, there's a lot of us, and there's a lot of young kids in a similar boat as me, you know. The last thing you want to do is pull out of a fight because you're injured, you know, particularly if you're in the UFC or something, you know, because you pull out of a fight, man, they'll put you on ice for six months, eight months, you know, and a lot of us have, you know, families and everything else that we need to, we got mouths to see, you know. So it, it, it is kind of an ugly part of the sport that, you know, you do fight injured, you have to fight injured. You know, and sometimes when you're young, you make the wrong decisions just in the name of competing, you know, and, and I certainly did. So, uh, you know, one thing that, you know, especially during this coronavirus, uh, I've, I've done seven, uh, seven times, I've gone to seven different rehabs and, and spoke to them about, about my story, you know, and, and, and what I, what I went through, um, since, you know, since I haven't been working at night, I've been able to go in the evenings. Uh, the, the other thing that I do is, is in particular, when it comes to martial arts, you know, I, I put myself out there, you know, on Instagram every single day, you know, uh, I'm talking to somebody about, about the battles I've been through, you know, and, and, and trying to, to help them and give them guidance as, as best I can and support. Um, because, you know, it is, it's one of those things. It's like um, our guest was saying earlier, you know, when you got a pro telling you how to tackle, you're going to listen, you know. And and for a lot of these younger fighters, when, uh, you know, mom and dad, whatever, can tell them, hey, that's a bad idea, they're not going to listen. 
but but when I when I tell them, maybe I throw a couple cuss words in when I do. Uh, it seems they seem to be a little, little bit more receptive. So uh, you know, I try to I try to uh, extort that fact as much as I can, and, and, and try to try to guide people so that uh, you know they don't just have a few years you know uh, of of activity in their sport, but their life is good both dear before, during, and after their their competitive years. Love it. I sometimes I do that with the kids, you know, because it's natural for us. Sometimes you know the kids. So then they it's sometimes they it's hard for them to listen. And it doesn't matter if you're people team some more. Sometimes these kids if you're around them enough, you're comfortable. And then they would do things that yeah, like you gotta snap them out of it. And so I mean football pizza, tackling machine pizza comes out and I'm like, hey, and they understand and know like, okay, he's serious now. <laughs> like, oh, oh, all right, I'm tripping. And um and and sometimes you gotta shake them up. Sometimes you gotta shake them up just to kind of like, hey, like it's a physical sport, and you don't want them to get hurt. And the worst thing to do is try to coddle them, try to baby them, and then tell them go in, go on the field, go out in the ring, and expect them to be physical like you want them. And and so, but I guess, I, and there is a line where it's all right. What you're you're doing is unsportsmanlike. All right, as long as you do it between the whistles, we're good. If you do it after the whistle, or if it's excessive, I like I believe in sportsmanship. So your sportsmanship, and you, it's not worth it because now we're gonna get a flag. So uh, there's a fine line, but then again, keeping the integrity of the sport, the physicality, because that's why people love it, is paramount as well. So it's not an easy thing, but I think everyone's trying to figure it out, and I appreciate that. I had a question for you though. How do you feel about like the younger fighters coming up? How do you feel one about like approaching them as like a mentor or even just a, like those conversations? And two, like if that is if, if you didn't do that, how do they respond or are they receptive to your coaching? Well, you know, it it's it's an interesting thing at MMA gym. Um, you know. It, you know, a lot of the kids, you know, that, that we get in particular, um, you know, they, they weren't college bound, you know, uh, they grew up fighting already. They grew up fighting already, you know, um, so, so they're a little rough around the edges. So, um, you know, you got to, you know, in, in my case, luckily, I'm still young enough to get in and uh, uh, mix it up with them a little bit, you know, so, you know. I get in, I, I, I take their best shot, you know, I give it back to them, you know, and then maybe at the end of the round, you know, the first day, I might just point out one little thing, you know, but but it's a slow process to earn somebody's respect. You know, you have to, you know, first, first you have to demand it, you know, with a lot of these kids. You have to demand their respect, you know. So, you know, I, tr I, tr I, I take my time. I take my time, you know, I, I don't start trying to change everything in, in, in their life and in, and in their game in particular, you know, I, I, I pick my battles, you know, and, you know, and, and also, you know, it, it's one of those things where you're right. You can't coddle them. You can't, you can't be too nice. You, sometimes you gotta, you gotta be a little tough on them. You gotta be a little hard on them. And then sometimes you gotta, you gotta flip your hat around, you know, when, when, when shit gets serious and let them know that, uh, that you're there for support if they need it, you know? So it, it, it's finding that balance in particular, you know, you're, you're in San Diego too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Out here in San Diego, you know, a lot of these kids we get from, you know, national city or we get a lot of boxers coming over from TJ, you know, they, they, they're, they think everybody's soft, man, you know, out, out the gate. So, you know, you know, you just you just you, you take your time and you slowly build you slowly build that uh, a trust and that and that relationship. You know, till eventually, hopefully, when uh, that serious piece of advice needs to get through, it, it it actually does and it'll register. That's so awesome. Sorry, guys, I didn't mean to take it in the show, but uh, <laughs> I did see an interview. Um, 
of Little Wayne, and he was interviewing a fighter. And I thought, you know, that was a great point you brought up. And he brought about the respect. He loved after you guys fight, how you guys all hug it out, and it's a genuine like respect for each other. And he's like, man, I love that about sport. And I talked about sportsmanship earlier, um, but I think it's different when you have a respect for someone. I mean, you give it your best, but that's that's like the respect for the other person where you're like, man, I, I laid it all out there for you. <laughs> you know? I, yeah, I'm trying to win. You're trying to win, and it's all good. Like, we settled it. We fought, and I, I and I thought, man, that's he's right. I love the respect for you uh, that you guys have for each other. And your guys' community is awesome, man, and I think it's so cool what you're doing. I mean, teaching these kids because they're all not going to play football, like you said. They're not going to go to college and play football. Hey, I like listening to you guys right now because you guys, you know, for me, you sports and AU baseball, I think it's important for me to hear what you guys have to say on how, on how you go about coaching the youth of today. You know, it's important for me to hear it and it can help me do it in a better job because we are setting these kids up for life lessons at the end of the day. And I always tell kids, hey, life's about some failure and some speed bumps. So how do we get over it? Right? How, what's our response to everything? Right? And I think that's like my comment team is what's going to be our response? That right? we make an error or we miss a tackle or we get knocked out in a fight. What's our response the next time going to be? How are we going to get back into the gym? What's our work ethic going to be? And that, and that can go on for all life, right? That's right. You know, I, I always tell them, I say, listen, man, whether, whether we win or lose, we look what worked, what didn't work. What needs improvement? You know, you never, just like you never had a perfect play, you never had a perfect game, you never had a perfect fight. If you have, it's time to retire, you know? And listen, nobody has to like losing. I'm the first one to tell you. I, I, you know, I will lose gracefully, but I don't, I don't fucking like it. You know what I mean? And I think a lot of times you'll learn a lot more from a loss if you handle it properly, you know? But it, it's what are you going to do after that loss, how are you gonna how are you gonna handle yourself? Because that, right. that that in particular, you know, I can only speak for for martial arts. That's what I've done my whole life. Right. But you know, how many times have we seen guys get you know all this momentum, all this steam? They're and they're unstoppable. They lose one fight, and then they lose their next two or three fights straight. You know, it's uh, momentum is such a, uh, a real thing in, in our sport. And it, it really is a skill to uh, to learn how to uh, to overcome overcome a loss and, and get back in there and, and, and compete and compete well. You and know, again, um, with my son, we're doing this competition. Uh, my two boys. So one team is me and my younger boy. The other team is the neighbor and and my other son, my older son, and we have battles and we play and there's rules it's basketball but after after like and it's heated battles because i you know i don't whenever i i play i play i only know one way it doesn't matter if you know whatever i can like i don't want to lose like you so anyhow um we we've been like we would lose and after the game i'm like hey, you still gotta shake his hand like all right let's shake hands let's just, all right. And his deal was he didn't want to shake hands. He'd want to walk off. Like, and I'm like, Hey bud, like this is part of it. If you don't like, you know, feeling this, then you got to win. And so, uh, <laughs> we were, we lost two championships in a row. And then the third one, it was like nine and nine. We're going up to 11 season one. And I had to call a timeout and I'm like, dude, if we lose this game, because he came back from nine to five. I said, dude, if we lose this game, it's all because of you. <laughs> I said, I've been throwing all the points. I've been playing defense. Like, I've been playing hard. And their guy's taking advantage of you. If you don't step up, we're going to lose. Now, for a parent, you like, if somebody hears that conversation, they would think like, dude, what, who says that to your kids? But what made me proud was the next play, he, he steals the ball from the kid, makes a point, and then, you know, we ended up winning the game, and he stepped up. And so when his best was needed, like, I'm his teammate. I felt comfortable. I was like, hey, bud, you got to step up. And if, you know, you don't step up, you're going to lose. And I didn't think that was anything wrong with that because, honestly, at the end of the day, 
holding each other accountable is what life's all about. And so I guess my thing is like what my kids like coaching them through this and it's a learning process for me. I understand, Hey, I don't like, I don't always have to say like positive uplifting things to them. I can call them out on their BS and that's fine too, because people are going to call them on their BS in life. And if he's responds like, Oh, I shut down. Oh, I give up. I quit then you responded the wrong way. And that's why you're not going to be successful. People that, you know, whether they lose or not, shake hands and know like, all right, I'm going to come back and ask yes, next time. Those are the people like that people gravitate towards and love being around because they have that, that uh, strive for greatness. And they, and they understand that it's only temporary, like, sucks, we don't want to do it again, but clean it up. And next time when you win, it'll be that much sweeter. So I mean, for me, I feel like I'm always coaching and, and I'll always, but it's definitely hitting home now with the whole COVID thing and being at home. And so that's kind of how I go about my coaching um, with my kids. Cause they're, you're told like, Hey, don't do this. You don't want to affect their mental health. And you know, this is child abuse. And I'm like, man, if my kid's talking back to his mom, Hey, he's going to know that ain't all right. <laughs> now, all right, I'm not going to do that, out, but he's going to know that we can going to have a good for each other, you know? All right, okay, Chris has got to go. He's at, he, I think he's at, he's about to get ready. Okay. Thanks, Bye, go ahead, Chris. Chris, thanks for jumping on with us, brother. He was just giving me the sign. <laughs> hey, make sure you guys shoot me his info. I'm hitting him with a follow. I love, I love when I hear people, well, yeah, man, when you, when you, when you can relate to somebody because it's like, man, oh, that's the same thing. And that's what UFC, I'm like, dang, man, those dudes, same battle, same battle we're going through. So maybe we are all in this together. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was cool that you guys are, you know, both both West Coast guys. And, you know, we weren't expecting to have you guys overlap. And I think it was really cool that it worked out that way. Um, I know, like, the popcorn everybody was worried about. It was just it was coming from Chris a little bit, just a little feedback. So uh, okay. Oh, um, I knew we were all. I didn't want to say him. I wasn't going to tell him. See, I, mean, yeah. I knew it better because I wasn't going to tell Chris. I can't tell him. <laughs> <face it. laughs> yeah, uh, I wanted. Yeah, I wanted to throw Steve under the bus, but I was like, nah, just shut up, piece of just. You, know, <laughs> you just got to grin it and bear it, man. He's going. <laughs> you don't say nothing to that guy. <laughs> nope. I told Steve, I'm like, just text him and let him know what's happening. You always think. People always think these fighters are so unapproachable. I, I can't tell you. I haven't ran into one I, that I've either interviewed or, or or covered or that I can't just approach. So it's like I guess there's a, this this mythologically like that that the, these these crazy people because of the type of sport it is. But I can tell you that some of the most nicest, sweetest, down to earth people are are professional fighters. I, I guarantee you that. Right. And pizza. <laughs> <laughs> he apologized that he had to go to work. Chris, if you pop back in, we love you, brother. And I like, right. and I am going to send, send you, you uh, Chris's info so y'all can connect, man. That's and listen, cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you guys out some ATD gear, too, for jumping on with us. Uh, thank because you. I can't, I, like I told you before we came on, you know, and I know Jimmy and Steve's been doing, a, you know, interviewing guys a little bit longer than me and Jimmy have. But, you know, just how surreal it is uh, to be able to talk to athletes former athletes and just great men like yourselves, you know, it, it means so much to what we're trying to do. And I think it matters so much to all the things that you guys, you know, being able to have a voice after the game and, and show people like what you were talking about, the boys and girls club, you know, coaching high school sports, you know, I mean, that's just giving it back, man. And I, and I can't, I can't thank you guys enough. And a guy like yourself, we had Uchino on uh, last week uh, from the uh, chargers, another guy, younger guy, but, but doing so much for his community. You know, at a young age, 22 years old, giving back, you know, just getting a linebacker, too. We were trying to recruit him here in Philly, so we'll see if that happens. But, <laughs> but he's a, a great kid, man, like a kid who gets it. And I think I think more and more of these guys are getting it because of guys like you. So, you know, I can't thank you enough what you do for your community and, and what you do for everything, honestly. Thank you, guys. And it was a joy to watch it because I'm the same. I, I'm, th I'm 37. Are you 37, 38? 30, yeah, 38. I'll be 39 in July. Okay, so yeah, so I mean, being around the same age, I I, I, I watched you and remembered you really well. And like I said, we, we were going to call you. What was your nickname? I, we were, me and my buddy were talking about, we wanted to know like what your nickname, everybody has a nickname in the locker room. Yeah, so oh, um, they would call me Hawaii 5-0. Nice. <laughs> right? Nice. 
Uh, and uh, the first day I got there, the equipment manager, you know, because you don't you don't tell them, hey, I want this number. You kind of go and they give you a number. You're a rookie. You, you know, you don't. And he was like, here, I gave you number 50. For uh, Hawaii 5-0, and I was like, oh, that's pretty good. I like that. All right. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. And they actually had after my, oh, yeah, my rookie year, somebody made a sign that they would hang, you know, along the top that would say Hawaii 5 And they would, yeah, that was, and they would play the music sometimes. And I was like, yeah. Now that was like my moment to shine. And, you know, but sometimes it's hard to look hard when you're doing like a surf like pose, you know, you don't look too tough. So <laughs> got to work on that a little bit. Thanks for what you guys do, man. Thanks for having me on and allowing me this time to, you know, just just vibe with you guys, because, you know, like like this is cool <laughs> being able to to communicate with fans directly, guys who are hustling. I mean, this is the the atmosphere. The place we're in now is just amazing. And I'm 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 happy that I can be involved in this process. And guys, if there's anything you guys need from me, please don't ever hesitate. I mean that. Like I, I'll try to help you get some guests, man. <laughs> if I know anything you need from me, whenever you need me on, I'd love to come back and and support the cause. Sure. I think you guys are doing an awesome thing. And and uh, you know, I appreciate that. Even running into Chris, that was amazing and awesome. So thanks for what you guys do. I appreciate you guys. Yeah. Jeez, we can't yeah, it's funny how some of those things work out, like Tommy was saying. You don't really get the chance to realize sometimes how things connect. And now, like, you, you never know. Like, like, you know, you and Chris can go and do some things and maybe do some things in your community to kind of change them. Yeah, you just can't be afraid to uh, mess up or uh, fail. And uh, even with this, like, it's amazing. But I, 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 get, I get afraid of, like, failing on an interview. Like, that's why sometimes I say no, because I'm I don't want to mess up. I don't want to Drew Brees it, you know. I don't want <laughs> <laughs> I had to do that one. I had to skip that one because I'm I am i am a big Drew fan and you know I, I like how some of the team mates have a rallied around him, but you know, he spent some time in San Diego, so Drew's a good dude, but uh yeah. so sorry you have to be the brunt of this joke, but <laughs> But no, I do. I do appreciate these opportunities to spend and some spend time in the community because you don't get to do that as much when you're playing. You know, I know some guys go out there, but I think it's a little different. And, you know, it's something I can definitely get down with. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Again, I don't you, uh, you holding it down. Yeah. I mean, listen, I mean, for you to spend an hour with us, I, that's why I can't thank you enough for it. I mean, uh, it continues with all you guys and coming on and just genuine dudes. And, and we definitely want to have you back on again please and, and talk more. Um, in the coming months, so can't yep. thank you enough, and, and keep crushing boys and girls club. And and what high school team are you coaching? I never Mission answered. Hills High School, and so I coach freshman ball right now. I'm the defensive corner coordinator slash linebackers coach, and uh, my son's going to be a senior next year. And I basically did I sent him to that high school because I didn't want to have to coach him, and I wanted to put him around good coaches. And these are the coaches that coached me in high school, and so I know they know about the process, and so. I had to let go because even me, he doesn't listen to me. I'm like, man, if you would have did this, but it's just, uh, it's unfortunate and sad sometimes, but I'm like, hey, all right, well, at least you're around coaches who know. So yeah. I trust that. So yeah, I'm coaching freshman ball. I love it. Um, high school was a great pivotal time in my career. And, you know, and it's, it's, it's a chance for me to give back and grow the game because honestly, we need to get better with our coaching. So I'm like, all right, this is where you have me. I'm going to do the best that I can because that's the only way I know how to do it. And those kind of lessons carried on. And so not being afraid to fail. I'm like, man, it's freshman. I went a little, <laughs> yeah, but hey, then again, it's it was new and I tried it. So thank you guys for having me on. I loved it. Please. You got my number. Hit me up anytime. Send me Chris's info too, please. Steve. Well, Appreciate that. Well, we'll, get you, we'll get you some gear out. And uh, please. Quentin says, shout out. Uh, San Diego, just Spring Valley in the house. So I hey, Spring there. Valley! Shout out Spring Valley, six one nine. Stand up. Thanks for tuning in, Quentin. Sorry, I couldn't text you back, man. I'm not that good at technology yet. <laughs> Pisa, thanks for jumping on, brother. We're we'll following you guys. Thank you, Pisa. Hello. So, guys, that's oh, we got a close up there. We ain't that. We ain't trying to get that close. So, man, awesome, awesome, and uh, can't thank both of these guys. I mean, this is another yeah. guy. It just shows you how genuine, how genuine a lot of these athletes are out there. That you don't realize how much they're giving back to the communities. I mean, that's Uchina 
and Pisa in, in a week span that are both so much involved in the Boys and Girls Club of America and both guys on the West Coast and, and then not even talking about Chris and the things Chris does for, for youth sports. And, and both of these guys, man, I mean, two guys on at once giving back, right, and, and, and talking about, you know, how important it is, man, because – when you talk about youth sports in any way, like kids are, our kids are going to respect you. One, if you've done it, that that respect comes with that automatically, right? So if you play, you get the respect. That only goes so far. Though. You got to be able to keep it. There's a lot of pro guys, former guys that I've seen that don't get it because maybe they don't know how to communicate the game well enough, right? These two guys being extremely successful in what they do, as you can tell, both great communicators both genuine guys and kids kids pick up on that man if you're genuine to these kids and you really do care about these kids they see it right and then they fight for you and and, and that's how it works and that's how you grow these relationships right you know I, i've had my 11 since they were eight right so now they're 11. like they talk about there's times you put your arm around there's times you gotta yo let's go right so you gotta have the the, the give and take and, and for me to hear how they go about it uh, helps me out on what I do tremendously, and I think it helps a lot of people out that are that are either in youth sports, in high school sports, whatever, college sports, wherever you're at, man. These are two guys that are they're killing it. We'll have both on again, absolutely. I mean, shoot, I mean, Pisa should have his own show. I mean, I, I mean, tremendous, tremendous. I mean, he took the lead with Chris. He, 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 he took the lead. I'm like, go ahead. You know, you guys know me. I'm not. A, I'm not, Mister. MMA UFC guy. So I don't I don't try to act like I am. I had Chris questions for Chris. Um I sort of leave that to my man down there. But it was cool to have Pizza and Steve sort of just help us out with that one because that was awesome. But boys, stay tuned tonight. That's, that's the beauty part of, of, of being able to do the stuff like this because because you were sitting there messaging me like should I do it? Should I do it? And it's one of these things like when you when you have an opportunity to, for, to have these athletes being able to connect like that, when we're having these shows where we're, we have multiple guests, it's sometimes if you're able to do it, just kind of see what happens. Like, like, like there's some more than a, Hey, how you doing? Where these guys are around the same age and, and, and in the same area where like, who knows how, like, like, I, like I was saying, like, who knows how that was, that's going to happen where, you know, these guys could wind up working together and doing stuff in the community and making a difference from where they live. And it's something that we've been beating on this drum for a lot of our athletes to, to do for, for so long. You know, you know, Tommy was just sitting there mentioning that guys kind of just don't get it. They lose that clout. It's because they don't go and do stuff like that. They just want to be like, all right, how much am I getting? Those are the guys that just don't get it, that, yeah. that, 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 that trade misses them by. And, and that's the reason why we bring these guys on, because I feel that uh, the next generation of the kids behind us who are, who are, are the impressionable guys, guys and girls need to know these athletes. Absolutely. Yeah, they're honest we, about their we family. We had you know? That's huge. We had a lot when we were kids. We had to go to the library and read stuff where we have this technology now. And it's some of the things that that piece was touching on a half, how cool it is that we're able to do that. It's some of the things that we can't make happen now because of where we are in technology wise, where we are in life right now. No, absolutely. Uh, real quick. I read a couple of questions. Um, just a couple of statements. Uh, I know, Prism says, Pisa already in the ATU Hall of Fame 2020. You know that. You know that's shit, my brother. Quinn says, ATU, the fastest growing sports co sports company, baby. And that's some real talk. You said it, man. Says, sky's the limit. But listen, fam, stay tuned tonight. My boy over there, Jimmy Smith, coming here live right here on ATU Radio. We talking birds with the family later. You know, the best in the business with it. So stay tuned for Jimmy at 7. Uh, tomorrow, what time's the weekly roundup tomorrow? Steve. Uh, at the same time, we on we on the afternoon. You doing the afternoon again? Okay, tomorrow morning, ten thirty though a.m. The soccer boys are back. All right, so Ooh, kicking it inside, back in action. Soccer's back, you know, globally. So the boys will be on breaking down some soccer talk with you, and you have the weekly roundup after that. So three shows in a row, and then I'll be on with the boys Sunday for agree disagree. A two D. I love, and you know the coolest thing. The cool thing for me is to tell an athlete or a former athlete what this stands for. And they and, love it. And get the reaction. And it's always like, ah. ah. Uh, he uh, loved it, man. They didn't get to see that, but he was all about it. When I, went, when I went to the doctor's office and I had this on earlier, she's like, where's the box of it for us? We need them. I was so like, oh, no. We'll give you the code. Thank you. 
Go out. 20% off. Give him a discount. Give him a discount. All right, fam. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, our doc. Thank you for yours. Dr. Paul Bunnell, Specialized Physical Therapy, LLC, Burlington, Cherry Hill, Princeton locations. Fun on the web, specializedphysicaltherapy.com, as well as my boy Michael Ambrose and Buck Services. 20% off. Listen, the storms have been hit, man. Gutters, gutter guards, deck restoration. You need some siding work done. Whatever, my man's got you covered. And Buck Services, A M B U C K Services.com. For Tom Arnone, Jimmy Smith, Steve Reichel, Peace It, Tinoi Soma. <laughs> we knew you were going to do it. <laughs> Peace It, Tinoi Samoa. All right. Peace It, Tinoi Samoa. I got it. I got it. And Chris Lieben. Um, I got Chris's last name right? Yes, sir. Oh, good, good. I don't want to get knocked out, man. So for <laughs> Peace and Chris and, and you boys and all the family out there joining us, we love you. Uh, one more thing. Hold on, hold on. What's prison got? Oh, you got one from prison. There you go. Hey, Tom, would you love to see the breakdown? Be on prison this yeah. year. He's facing over ten plus players at ten plus sacks. Prism, I know it, baby. I know it. you talk to Alfie. You go get in Ralphie's goddamn head about it. because Jason Peters is gonna be back on this football. Oh, you gonna trust? Yeah, you gonna trust the guy, baby? You gonna trust the crab, baby? I ain't trust the crab, baby. You can trust the cry baby if you want to. Okay? I want a guy to be the bodyguard on this freaking football team. The bodyguard on I should have I should have pieces. What do you think about the guys crying in the locker room? What do you think about that? Has, has that age, does that age well? When you talk about your left goddamn tackle, when you're talking about the second oh, in, in, in <laughs> Tommy up. <laughs> the goddamn movie was made off the blind side. Shit, and we got that crying. And you all good with that? And we all trust Howie Roseman on draft day now? Uh, what, what did Howie be Mr. Draft that? Uh, all right, yo, all right, Tommy, want to get some more? I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit more background information. Prism isn't even an Eagles fan. I don't, that makes it even better. No bias, no agenda. A2D is a no agenda goddamn platform. I can sit here and tell you when the Cowboys are good. I'll tell you when the Redskins are good. I'll tell you when the Giants are good. I don't give a shit. I can hate them, but I can be a realist too. And I think that's what separates us from the rest of the Philly goddamn market. That's so right. when I tell you the Redskins defensively are going to be a damn problem, I ain't lying to you. When I told, when I attacked Ryan for telling me the Cowboys secondary wasn't good, when you forgot to maybe – the best corner in the NFC East that nobody wants to talk about. They still got right. Everybody wants to talk about. Everybody wants to talk about Byron Jones. Well, the guy on the other side's better. <laughs> the, guy, the guy on the other side's better. I forgot him too, so I can't blame Ryan. I can't blame because <laughs> I forgot him too. So I was trying to debate with him. So I went and was like, "Wait, they still got somebody I'm missing." And when yeah. I looked at, it, I said, "Oh, they ain't bad." I don't know where, like you know. And then he's like, "Yeah, you're right," because like we both realized it on the fly, like. Shit, they're actually better than we thought, you know. So we're gonna keep it real, man. When I told you two years ago or three years ago that the Cowboys had the best offensive line in football, I wasn't just blowing smoke up your ass. Are we even gonna address this last one or we just laugh at it? Did he really say that? Well, Dylan, yeah. Dylan, I'll yeah, tell yeah, you, bro. I'll tell you your defense is upgraded. Um, uh, not not to where you need to be. Um, definitely better, but calm down. I mean, I mean, yeah. I cut that. When I couldn't do the show Wednesday because the internet, but the Eagles were one of my three most improved teams in the NFL. And I'm going to leave you with all this. Roby, Nick, Roby Coleman is the best nickel cover guy in football. It ain't even freaking close. You understand this? The second, forget Darius Slay. Just take Slay away from it for a minute, okay? I went out and got the best nickel guy in football. When how important is it? It's the most important position to cover is the guy, is the slot guy, right? Talking about it. Okay, then I got Darius Slay. Speaking. One of, the, one of the best island guys in football. Then, then I got a D tackle nobody wants to talk about in Hargrave. Okay, and then I made one of the biggest moves that's going to be one of the best moves in the last four years for this franchise. And that's moving Jalen Mills to safety. All right, yeah. you heard it here first. Love it. Transition is going to be spotless. Spotless. And Rodney McLeod is better than Malcolm Jenkins right now. So, so you don't like that? Come in my goddamn inbox. Right. Seven, we'll talk about it.
And Jimmy, see you later, guys. I'm gonna so you can't end the show better than that. Tommy just finished it off. And Jimmy, <laughs> and Jimmy will take you home tonight with everything I just said, plus more insight and everything. Cause my man knows his shit. Love you, brother. Love you too, boys. Great interview. Great time. I'll see you boys at seven. Take care, guys. Later, guys. Hey, Go birds. Oh, I gotta end it, don't I? <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a,